Hello, everyone. I am Shubham, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Michigan. I think I'm the only grad student who's giving a talk, and also the last talk, so that's, that's a lot of pressure, but I'll try my best. Um, so thank you all for giving me the opportunity, and I'm going to talk, take this time to talk about my experience with Reddit moderators. Almost spent a year collaborating with them, we started with a very broad agenda, then I designed a tool, and then I actually got a chance to run that tool on Reddit. So I'll talk about the process and also what we learned from it. The tool itself is called Appeal Mod. Uh, it's a tool that I built to support the moderator's handling of ban appeals. If you are wondering how appeals are relevant to the design of comment sections, which is the theme of the day, uh, on a broad level, it's very important to manage the membership of the community, right? Because, you know, we talk about how we can nudge positive behavior, but also some, there will always be some bad actors. And for moderators, it's very important to sort of manage who is going to be a part of their community, how do they keep these bad actors away. So that's, that's how overall, you know, ban appeals would be relevant to maintaining the quality of discussion in an online community. And then once you ban somebody, you also need to give them a chance to come back if they have realized their mistake or if the moderators made a mistake. So you always need some mechanism to make sure that those decisions can be corrected and users get a chance to at least have, have their say in the decision-making process. And of course, there are other broader things that I learned from this process, which I think would be relevant to all of us as we start thinking about designing tools for communities or designing tools with Reddit moderators. And then finally, I'll end my talk with an emphasis on what we still don't know. Um, I sort of already did why bands are important. This was honestly not a planned slide, but going through the entire day, I felt I should spend a little bit of time talking about why user bands and how they are important in the broader context of uh, ensuring that online spaces remain safe and meaningful. Uh, so to get started with, why did I particularly choose to focus on ban appeals? The choice was actually a result of an elaborate design process that was carried out with Reddit moderators. I started with interviewing moderators to understand their challenges and generate new design ideas. Um, as Emily also just talked about, uh, Reddit moderators, I also found in my research that moderators have to juggle between a lot of different tasks. Um, for example, this is a, an artifact from my design process where you see a deck of cards which was sorted by one of the moderators, and it essentially shows uh, the order of priority amongst the many different tasks that moderators do. So from this, desk, from this deck of cards, I picked the moderator's handling of uh, ban appeals as the focus of the project. One of the reasons for that was that mods were also very interested in actually trying out the solutions in a real world setting. So then we spent the next few months understanding the ban appeals process, how do moderators do it, what challenges they face, what are their strategies, and then I finally designed the tool, once again regularly engaging with the moderators to understand what they feel about it and getting regular feedback. Finally, we got a chance to test out appeal mod in a real world setting on RPix, which is, for those of you who don't know Reddit, it's organized around independent communities. RPix is one of the largest communities on Reddit. It has over 30 million users. All right, so now, now I'll focus more on what we learned from the design process itself. Um, but even before that, I'm gonna spend a few minutes to sort of talk about ban appeals on Reddit. Uh, most users, when they are informed that they have been banned from a community, would like to appeal against their ban. Once the user appeals against the ban, the mods would like to conduct a bit of a background check on the user, so they would look at the user's profile, see what's going on, and then they would also ask certain questions, which you can see in the screenshot here, just to get more information from the user before they actually make their final decision. We also found from our uh, study that most users who are banned actually appeal against their ban, but in reality, very few appeals are actually granted by the moderators. In fact, a lot of the users who technically appeal against their ban are simply angry at the moderators, and they often send a lot of toxic messages and also attack moderators for their decision. 
I do apologize for the foul language there, but it is an actual screenshot from a message that was sent by the user to the moderators. Um, despite all these challenges, one thing that moderators continu continuously emphasized throughout the design process was having this final authority over the decision. Uh, they really valued having this authority, and this was not just true for ban appeals, but for a lot of other tasks that moderators do, they take a lot of pride in sort of having curated this community, and with that pride, they also think that they should have the final authority on a lot of the decisions. So oftentimes when we think about reducing moderator workloads or designing tools for communities, there are ideas that focus on crowdsourcing or using AI, but sometimes we have to be a little more creative and also think about the loss of agency that comes with using some of those techniques, and we have to think of other ways that can be implemented to still reduce the workload, but also give moderators the sense that they have agency over the final decision. So keeping all of that in mind, I realized that having some sort of an automated bot that would address user appeals, collect all that additional information that moderators desire, could actually be beneficial to the moderators. The entire process was still designed to like take only two or three minutes, so users don't feel like they are doing a lot of work, but it would still be quite beneficial to the moderators. The most important benefit that I thought this process would bring is that it would induce a sort of a self-selection effect among the users. That is, it would discourage users who have an insincere appeals or users who simply want to send a toxic message to the moderators. Those users would be discouraged from the presence of an automated bot and users who have a genuine appeal, the bot is basically telling you what you need to do for your appeal. So it's actually assisting them in completing their appeals. To actually test out whether the self-selection would work or not, we had to conduct a field experiment on RPIX, which is one of the largest Reddit communities. During the experiment process, the appeals were randomly assigned to either the control arm, which was Reddit's existing process, or the treatment arm, which is the newly designed appeal mod process. The experiment lasted about three months. During the process, approximately 900 appeals were submitted. And to further highlight the comparison between the control and the treatment arm, um, so on Reddit's existing process, appeals are directly forwarded to the moderator's inbox. So whatever you write directly goes to the moderators. But with appeal mod, the appeals were initially hidden from the moderators until the user completed the process. And once the process was completed, the appeals were then made, were then sent to the moderator's inbox along with the additional information that users provided in the process. Um, so then after running the experiments for a few months, we finally started looking at the data. As I mentioned before, uh, 900 appeals were submitted. The appeals were roughly equally divided between the control group and appeal mod. What the results show here is that um, only 30% of the users under appeal mod actually completed their appeal. So we reduced the moderator's workload by simply hiding the 70% of the appeals from users who did not even complete the process. And if you are thinking 70% of the big, 70% is a big number, here's an even bigger number. When we looked at users who had sent an appeal that was toxically worded, 91% of them did not even submit their appeals to the human moderators. So yes, a lot of users were discouraged from the new process, but the selection effect was much more pronounced for users who had a toxically worded appeal or who were more, th those kind of users were therefore more likely to be discouraged from the process. Uh, there is an argument to be made here that appeal mod was simply making it less likely for users to get back into the community, and you know you are taking the final chance away from them. So we also looked at the number of appeals that were granted, and you can see that despite a large reduction in the number of appeals that were completed, the number of appeals that were granted were largely similar. So even though mods were reviewing less appeals, they were still granting roughly the same number of appeals. When we also looked at the moderator's response rate, we see that the response rate was actually higher when appeals were submitted under appeal mod. So that is a desirable impact for users. Not all appeals will be granted, but at least you are more likely to receive a response from the moderators. Um, finally, to end, I'll end my talk with outlining a couple of things that we still don't know. Um, first of all, extending the discussion that we were having since morning. We talked a lot about using design, how technological design can sort of impact user behaviors and nudging user towards pro-social behavior. 
but there will always be some bad actors. So I, I guess one of the questions that I wanted to bring up is how can we use bots to induce more self-selection effect to actually weed out bad actors and then promote healthier discussions? I talked about a similar intervention in the case of appeals, but I, I think there is an opportunity to be had in terms of whether similar interventions would work in more open spaces like comment sections as well. And the second one, which is more of a personal challenge that I face, uh, I called it the academic challenge about in terms of how do we sustain tools like appeal mod while working in academia. I personally feel like a lot of incentives that I have right now to work are not really aligned with the long-term sustainability of tools. Oftentimes the tools require maintenance or changes in the API require you to change your code. And as PhD students, I find it really difficult to actually sustain these tools. So I just wanted to bring that out and see if people have ideas about that. And with that, I would like to thank you all for the time and the opportunity.